Our Mother Earth is astonishingly beautiful. Here we can find majestic giant mountains and hills. Some of these are also snow capped as we can see here. We can even find beautiful valleys, lush green plains, islands etc. Beautiful rivers, lakes, vast oceans and even waterfalls are also observed on the earth's surface. But let me tell you that the earth's interior is quite different from its outer appearance. In this lesson we shall discuss in details about the interior of the earth. See here we have a picture of a delicious chocolate. Yes, it is Ferrero Rocher. Now this chocolate is not only amazing to taste but it also has an intriguing concept. Now once you bite or cut into this chocolate you will find that it is composed of three distinct layers. The outer layer is hardened chocolate and it is filled with nuts. The middle layer is melted hazelnut chocolate and the innermost part or the central part is a solid hazelnut. So, this chocolate is composed of three distinct layers. Well, just like this chocolate, our earth's interior also has a similar structure. So, as mentioned just now, the earth's interior is very similar to this chocolate. This is to say that the earth's interior is composed of three distinct layers. See here we have the picture of earth's interior and we can see that it is composed of one, two, three three distinct layers now the outer surface of the earth is very hard just like this chocolate which is a hardened chocolate filled with nuts the second or the middle layer of the earth is a semi-solid state and it is mostly composed of molten soft rocks now just like this chocolate has a whole easel nut at its center similarly the earth's central part is also solid now let us see what are these three layers called and what are its properties. Well, the solid outermost layer of the earth is called crust or lithosphere. This crust or lithosphere comprises of the exterior part of the earth. Now apart from this crust, there are two other layers present below the crust. So, crust comprises the exterior part of the earth and other name for crust is lithosphere. Now, this crust is very thin compared to the other two layers and as a matter of fact, it comprises of only 1% of the earth's total volume. Now, as mentioned earlier, another name for crust is lithosphere where the word lithosphere is a Greek word where litho means land or rocks so as the name suggests the crust is composed of different types of rocks now these rocks are also rich in different minerals so different minerals and rocks are found at the outermost layer of the earth which is crust also this outermost layer of the earth that is crust or lithosphere supports life this is to say that the plants that you see growing on land, the animals that you see roaming on land and in fact the fishes that live in oceans are all part of lithosphere. Now this diagram depicts the outermost layer of the earth that is crust or lithosphere. Now here we can see that the thickness or width of the crust is not uniform throughout. This is to say that the crust has mountains or hills which are very tall while the ocean basins are also present on the earth's crust which are very low. Thus the thickness of the crust is not uniform throughout. It is wider or thicker below the continents and it is thinner below the oceans. In fact, the average thickness of continental crust is 35 km, while the average thickness of ocean basins is only 5 km. Overall, the average thickness of the Earth's crust is 40 km approximately. Now, these two parts of the crust, that is continents and oceans, have special names. Let's know about them. 
well the part of the earth that is thicker below the continents or the continental crust is known as seal while the part of the earth below the oceans that is ocean basins or oceanic crust is known as sima so the earth's crust has two parts the continental crust is known as seal while the oceanic crust is known as sima now these two parts are named after their mineral composition this is to say that the continental crust is rich in minerals like silica and aluminium hence continental crust is named as sial where si stands for silica and al stands for aluminium so another name for continental crust is sial similarly the oceanic crust is rich in minerals like silica and magnesium hence another name for oceanic crust is sima where si stands for silica and ma stands for magnesium thus we find that the earth's crust is composed of two different parts the continental crust is known as sial while the oceanic crust is known as sima now let us try to answer this the continental crust is rich in hydrogen calcium iron or aluminium well the correct answer is continental crust is rich in aluminium well we just learned that continental crust is known as sial where si stands for silica and al stands for aluminium so out of these the correct option is aluminium now let's proceed with our lesson well i hope some of you must have played with slime now this slime has a thick and sticky consistency this is to say that you can neither call it solid nor liquid in fact the state of the slime is semi solid now as discussed previously the middle layer of the earth is in semi solid state and it is composed of soft molten rocks and this middle layer of the earth is known as mantle so mantle is the middle or second layer of the earth's interior and it lies below the crust now the average thickness of mantle is 2900 kilometer approximately so mantle is the second or middle layer of the earth and it is composed of soft molten rocks now the central part or innermost layer of the earth is called core so look at this picture here we can see that core is the central part of the earth and it is present below crust and mantle now this core is rich in minerals like iron and nickel so another name for core is nife where ni stands for nickel and fe stands for iron or ferrous so since the earth's core is rich in minerals like nickel and iron therefore it is also known as nife now the radius or average thickness of core is 3500 km approximately now this core is very dense and it has high temperature and pressure in fact the core is like a super heated dense ball and it is present at the central part of the earth so here we have the complete structure of the earth's interior we find that it is composed of three distinct layers crust which is the outermost part of the earth mantle which is the second or middle layer of the earth and finally we have core that is the innermost part of the earth 
Now, as depicted in this picture, the thickness of all these three layers vary. The crust we know is very thin and its average thickness or width is only 40 km. Next, we have mantle. The thickness of mantle is 2400 km. And finally, as mentioned just now, the thickness of core is 3500 km. Now, the approximate radius of the earth is 6370 km. So, the earth's radius is 6370 km. So, in today's lesson, we discussed about the interior structure of the earth and we find that it is composed of three distinct layers, crust, mantle and core. Crust is the outermost part of the earth, mantle is the middle or second layer of the earth which is sandwiched between crust and core and finally core is the innermost or central part of the earth. So that's all about our discussion on earth's interior. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubt resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now